Hi everyone, my name is Heidi Vanderswell and I'm a lecturer at the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland in their junior and early year divisions. And today we are here to talk about the cello bow hold. So you are going to need a pencil and some sort of marker to put little dots on your hand. So with a bow hold, one of the most important things is just to have a relaxed hand. So the first thing that we're gonna do is hold our bow hold hand, which is your right hand, out in front of you and just give it a little shake and let it gently relax. And you'll notice that your fingers fall slightly separated and your thumb, if you turn your hand over, your thumb is naturally attracted to your second finger, your longest finger. So it's almost like they're buddies. So let's try that again. So shake your hand out and then just let it flop. Very good. Okay, now you need your pen. You might need someone to help you with this. Um, and we're going to put little dots on our fingers. So you'll see I've already put dots on mine, but I'll show you again. We're gonna put a dot in between this knuckle and this knuckle on the fleshy, squishy part of your finger. So a dot there, same thing on the second finger, on the third finger, and on the pinky. My, the one on my pinky sometimes is a little bit higher, okay? And then finally, we need a dot on your thumb. So we don't put it in the center, we put it on the corner. Because when the thumb hits the bow, it's actually on the corner, just like that. So if you're looking at your thumb, it's on the right side, okay? So we've got our dots, and that's just to help us see where we're gonna place the pencil. Hold the pencil in your cello hand, which is the hand that you use to play the cello, your left hand, and put your bow hand palm face up so that you can see all the dots on your hand. And you're going to place the pencil on those dots so that they're all covered up and your fingers just hold onto the pencil like that. And then your thumb comes up and you place the dot of your thumb across from your second finger. And it's got a nice gentle curve. And we can turn our bow hold over. And look at that. You've got all of your fingers hanging down because the pencil is along those dots. Your thumb is across from your second finger and lightly bent. And your hand is very relaxed. You can flop it around a little bit. Okay. Then you can turn your hand over shake your hand out and you can see if you can do that again and each time you're gonna get a little faster so pencil on the dots thumb across from your second finger turn the pencil over and do that as many times as you need to until it feels really comfortable now it's time to use our bows so I have my bow here you have the stick of the bow the hair the tip and the frog and before we use the bow, it's very important that we remember to tighten the bow when we're going to use it, and then loosen the bow after you finish. If you don't loosen the bow, the horsehair stretches out and then it doesn't work properly. So you can see now that I have a space between the horsehair and the stick of the bow. You don't ever want the bow to curve the other direction. It doesn't want to frown. You want the stick of the bow to smile, okay? And we need to put a little bit of rosin on our bow. Rosin is made from tree sap, it comes from the word resin. We're just gonna go up and down the bow smoothly so that the rosin goes on. Um, rosin is what helps the bow to, to pull the string. If you don't have any rosin on your bow, it won't make any sound when you put it on the cello. Okay, put that away. Now, this is the story of the bow hold. In the Bohold Kingdom, we have a king. He's the longest finger, so he's the king. And he sits on a silver throne. No one else is allowed to sit on the silver throne. And there's a rule in the kingdom that no one is allowed to touch the king. So none of the other residents of the kingdom can touch him. Next to the king sits his queen. And she wraps around the stick of the bow right next to the king, but without touching him. And then the prince sits on his own little chair. And finally, the princess delicately rests 
next to the prints. If we were a violinist, we'd put our pinky on the top of the bow, but most of the time for cellos, we put it down along the side so that all of the fingers are hanging down the side. They're not sticking out like this. They're actually gripping the side of the bow, which leaves our thumb. And the thumb is the gardener in the kingdom, and he likes to sit on the wall and peep over at the king. So if you look through my window, watch, you can see the gardener peeping through. And that way he can see what the king is doing. But it's very important that the gardener keeps his balance. He doesn't want to peep too far because if he does, he slides through and touches the king. And the law of the land is that no one can touch the king. So you can't let your gardener slip through. He has to stay on the wall balanced beautifully. Okay, so we have the queen, the king, the prince, and the princess, and the peeping gardener. And you can make him peep by bending and straightening your thumb. And that gives us a beautiful bow hold kingdom.